Hi, welcome to uh, back to another PDP uh, video learning lecture. Uh, this is a continuation of topic 9 part 1. Uh, for this part 2, we look at uh, power factor correction for a system because uh, reactive power charge is one of the key charge in uh, electricity tariff. It is always important to understand how power factor correction could be implemented so that it can reduce the uh, energy loss during in the transformers, cables and generator as a result of a high level of uh, reactive power. So usually we will look at uh, things like uh, uh, what you call power factor improvement that's the term we use right in the electrical system we use as transformer electrical motors or even discharge lamp all these introduce lagging power factors in our system and if the power factor or lagging power factors is too high right or rather it's too low the other way uh, useful power are lost in the heating of the generator coils or cables transformers things like that so we need to try to improve the power factors and usually it, it is uh, targeted to be above 0 0.85 uh, as we said there is a reactive power charge in that sense it's some form of a penalty that if your power factor is no good the reactive power is high right uh, if we could uh, find ways to improve the power factor we may end up saving on a uh, necessary reactive power bill right uh, basically to correct power factor we commonly introduce static capacitors into our electrical system which are usually installed at the intake point of the electricity supply or on individual equipment for example in all the fluorescent fittings or in motor starters now Capacitors installed in the intakes are usually automatically controlled. That means uh, you could uh, allow for adjustment of the capacity bank, like the, the capacitor's bank, so that uh, as the power factor varies throughout the day, it can be modified. New capacitor bank can be switched off or on uh, to adjust for the changing in power factors. Um, the good thing about installing automatically controlled capacitor bank uh, allows us to compensate for inductances, inductances in cables and transformer as different circuits are switched on and off. Of course, the disadvantage of this extra overhead is the higher cost involved. Now, power factor correction using static capacitors are based on two assumptions. Now, one is the constant load kilowatt and the constant KVA. So we will use the constant kilowatt method. Right? How do we do it? Look at that. Uh, figure 1A shows the power diagram of the installation before any power factor correction. Figure 1B shows the power diagram with the power factor correction uh, included. In other words, effectively we reduce the reactive power Q1 until it becomes Q2. Right? Where the real power P1 remains the same. Uh, that, that is the idea of improving the power factor. So, reactive power before correction Q1 is given as P1 tangent of the angle theta 1 KVAR whereas reactive power after the correction Q2 is just P1 tangent of the new angle theta 2 KVAR so the reactive power to be compensated it's actually just the difference between these two. So it's Q1 minus Q2. So that's P1 tangent theta 1 minus P1 tangent theta 2. So that gives us the compensation 
required for reactive power is just the real power bracket tangent first angle before compensation minus tangent angle after compensation so that is the reactive power or capacitive power to be uh, introduced Let's look at one example here. Example 10. A shopping complex has a constant load of 3,500 kilowatt. If the power factor currently is 0 0.8, what would be the rating of the capacitor bank in KVAR required to improve the power factor to 0 0.85? So the original reactive power is actually the real power, 3500, tangent of uh, this angle, cos inverse of 0 0.8, will give me an angle that gives you 2625 kVAR. The reactive power after the correction is 3500 tangent the inverse of the cosine of this number. So, cosine inverse 0 0.85 will give me an angle. Tangent of this angle will give me this value, 2169 kVAR. So, the rating of the capacitor bank that I need to introduce is actually 2625 kVAR minus 2169 kVAR. So the final answer is 456 kVAR. kVAR R means stands for reactive power. Okay. Then look at another example, example 11. The power available at the factory is 1000 kVA. The present load is uh, 1000 kVA at a power factor of 0 0.8. What is the rating of the capacitor bank in kVAR required to improve the power factor to 0 0.85? This time, remember, we are given kVAR. So I need to calculate the real power that was being used. That is 800 kilowatt that means 1000 kvar times the power factor 0 0.8 the original reactive power is the 800 real power tangent cos inverse of 0 0.8 that's the 600 kvr the reactive power after correction is 800 tangent of the new power factor angle that gives me 495.8 so the difference is actually the compensation needed and is provided by the capacitor bank. So it's 600 minus 495.8 that is 104.2 kVAR. Right. Capacitor bank can be connected in star or delta. For capacitor banks connected in star, the value of the capacitors in each phase is given by the formula Capacitance C is equals to Q in VAR divided by 2 pi F. F is the frequency of a supply in Singapore is 50 Hz. V square is the voltage you need to apply. Where C is the value of the capacitor in farads. Q is the value of the capacitor in KVAR. F is the frequency of a supply and V is the supply voltage. Remember line voltage. For capacitor bank connected in delta, which one was in star, the only difference now is I have an extra 3 at the bottom here. Right in delta, so that. So let's do a question number, example number 12. A shopping complex has a constant load of 3500 kilowatt. The electricity supply is low voltage, 400 volt, 3 phase 50 hertz. A 456 kVR capacitor bank is required to improve the power factor from 0 0.8 to 0 0.85. See earlier example. We want to calculate the size of a capacitor in microfarad required if the capacitor bank is connected in delta. Right? So delta, we need to use this formula. Size of the capacitor bank is Q over uh, 3 bracket 2 pi F V square. So it's 456 times 10 to the power of 3. Uh, to convert it to VA, divide by 3 times 2 pi times 50 hertz times 400 square. That gives me 3024 microfarad.
Another example, the power required from a power transformer at the factory is 2000 kVA. The present load is 2000 kVA with a power factor of 0 0.8. So what is the spare capacity in kilowatt available at the present moment when the power factor is raised to 0 0.85? Now the total real power available at a power factor of 0 0.8 is 2000 times 0 0.8 which is 1600 kilowatt. The real power is 2000 times 0 0.8 which is this. Therefore the spare capacity is just 1006 megawatt so there is no spare capacity. Okay, remember this is the transformer power but this is my current loading. Okay. So the total real power available at the improved power factor of 0 0.85 is 2000 times 0 0.85 is 1700 kilowatt. But the current real power only needs 1006, so the spare capacity is 100 kilowatt. So this is the benefit of improving the power factor to 0 0.85. Finally, let's look at the this one is, uh, example 14. Example 14. Uh, try to put a dollar value into everything here. So the power available in the factory is this amount, 2000 kVA. The present load is 2000 kVA with a power factor of 0 0.8. So if the power factor were to be improved to 0 0.85, we want to know what is the cost saving in electricity bill for one month over 30 days. The reactive power charge is 0 0.007 cents per kVAR for every unit 62% of the kWh consumed. Assume that the factory operates at the same load for 24 hours a day. Now before power factor correction, the real power is just 2000 times 0 0.8 which is 1600 kilowatt. So if this is used for one month, it's 1600 times 24 hours in a day and 30 days so that is 1.152 million units oh, sorry not in million units and this is a kilowatt okay yeah kilowatt hour so it's million units so the total kvr of the load before power factor correction is 1600 which is the power tangent of the angle times 24 hours times 30 days is 86400 kvar now 62% of the total unit consumed is just 714 so this is lower than this lower than the actual uh, kvar so therefore there is a charge involved because small more minus what is allowed is this times 7 0 0.07 cents so this is the amount you have to pay because of the the active charge is the because of the higher reactive uh, power this is the amount I have to pay now after the power correction factor uh, the original power was 1600 kilowatt right so this is the monthly consumption but now with the power factor correction, the new angle is cost inverse of 0 0.85. So the actual VAR unit use, uh, KW, KVAR unit use has dropped. But compare this against the 62%, it is below now. So I don't have to pay any reactive power charge. Therefore, the saving is the amount that was paid for the uh, reactive charge if the power factor was at 0 0.8 all right so this is uh, up to here we are talking of power factor correction and why is it important for us to correct the power factor now the last section of this topic deals with energy management now energy management is aimed at optimizing the use of energy what does that mean it means that we have to find ways to save energy right? because we have to conserve the world natural resources. Singapore imports all our energy, raw energy, and then in the power station is converted to electricity. So if we use less electricity, we don't use 
uh, as much natural resources in terms of natural gas. Uh, because of lower electrical charge, we can then reduce our cost of goods and services. In addition, we also are being more friendly to the environment. Now, an energy audit is a study of energy usage in a company or a building, a process, or even a piece of equipment, and then making recommendations for actions to reduce energy burden. The study usually examines the area of energy consumption and identify where is the location of energy wastage, uh, area where energy losses can be reduced, like in the case of power factors, it's in the cables, uh, areas of equipment which require replacement because may be too old and uh, using too much electricity, uh, and uh, newer equipment may be more efficient. Uh, as in Singapore, electricity is the main source of energy, therefore our focus is on how to control our uses of electricity. Now, electricity can be conserved by many ways, including control of use of artificial lighting. So where possible, we try to make use of natural lighting. We try to optimize the operation of aircon unit. We try to do uh, maximum demand management, that means if we could, you know, use more energy during off-peak hour, things like that, we may cut down on uh, having peak loads and so on. Uh, how do we control the power factor of the system? Uh, replacing obsolete or old equipment with newer equipment may be more efficient, of course. And finally, we have to do housekeeping. Make sure our uh, aircon system filters air exchange unit, all these are in clean condition. Uh, example 15 is a, is a typical way of comparing an energy audit of hotel, right, that by experimenting or by, the, by using different methods and so on, we may achieve different uh, energy saving. So in this example, uh, we have two set of condensing water pump, three set of chilled water pump, and all the pumps are operated 24 hours a day. Uh, the existing condensing pumps are rated at 60 horsepower with an efficiency of 83% and the existing chilled water pumps are rated at 75 horsepower with an efficiency of 83%. If new motors are efficiency of 90% uh, are introduced, then what are the savings? The electricity charge is 14 cents per unit. So we can do a very quick calculation. Input power before replacement is 2 times 60 times 469. One horsepower is 746 uh, watt. Divide by the efficiency that gives me the real power consumed. Right, the input power after replacement drops to 99.47 kilowatt. So the saving in kilowatt is 8.39 kilowatt. Whereas for the chilled water, the saving is 10.49 kilowatt. So the total energy save is 18.88 kilowatt. So saving electricity charges is just 18.88 kilowatt times 24 hours times 365 days times 14 cents. So the total saving achieved annually would be as much as $23,154.40. So this is the straightforward example of a replacement of old and new uh, uh, equipment. So that's all for topic 9. I hope uh, you revise this topic and uh, get a better understanding of what's involved. Bye-bye.